to watch this program but okay. please ensure that uh, the attendees should not uh, open the link of the youtube video and if they open also by chance please lower your volume otherwise there will be an echo problem yeah i mean yeah. Yeah, i yes. can i can control them we are addressing them no yes sir okay okay no problem sir i am sharing the link on link on the chat box yeah sure just wait sir i am Today is almost seven. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am Tridip Borali, the technical uh, coordinator of this web talk on foreign language learning perspective and opportunities by our esteemed resource person, Dr. Sajal Day. We have with us our IQSC coordinator, sir, Dr. Saurabh Singh Gupta, sir, and our honorable and most encouraging. personality of this web uh, web talk is our principal sir dr suranjan sharma sir and i welcome all the viewers who are watching us live on youtube and the attendees uh, who have joined us in our zoom web talk i would like to mention that uh, the youtube viewers can uh, put their questions on the live comment box of our official youtube video of the zoom web talk and the attendees who are attending this program can use the chat box as well as the question and answer features of this zoom webinar which is right in front of your screen and we'll all together put all those questions uh in our discussion session with our esteemed guest so another uh, invited panelists have joined with us uh, mr rajiv mohanta sir um, that's all for today now i'd like to request our uh, iqsc coordinator sir dr saurabh sen gupta sir to carry out the proceedings of the today's event thank you sir thank you everyone for joining thank you dilip uh, respected principal of amdava college dr shuranjan sharma sir uh, my dear uh, friends joining us from uh, across the country through the zoom and the facebook live and the youtube platform Uh, my well, uh, colleagues from the college and elsewhere uh, a very good evening to all of you uh, uh, i invite you to uh, participate uh, in the uh, zoom webinar uh, on foreign languages perspectives and challenges uh, by our esteemed speaker dr shajal day dr shajal day is an assistant professor department of russian studies at the english and foreign languages university shillong Dr. Shajal Day has a long association uh, with Russian languages, and he is an esteemed speaker across the country. And we are very happy to have him with us. I welcome Professor Day with uh, to the webinar, uh, and I also uh, uh, would like to say that uh, this is our third webinar uh, in our project in, uh, in our series of esteemed speakers. So I would like our principal, Dr. Shuranjan Sharma sir, to formally inaugurate. the webinar sir uh, thank you dr han sen gupta uh, good evening everyone good evening uh, everyone uh, i wish to welcome all of you to this uh, web talk on foreign language learning perspectives and opportunities organized by our uh, iqscl of damnama college uh, i wish to welcome dr sojal day assistant professor department of asian studies 
uh, English and Foreign Language University, uh, Shillong, in Gohat, in Shillong, India. Uh, I wish to thank Dr. Day for uh, joining, joining in this web talk. And I hope uh, his eliminating lecture will uh, uh, give us a good idea about the opportunities of learning foreign language. I will, uh, I will in this uh, perspective, uh, I wish to uh, thank uh, our IPC coordinator, Dr. Saurabh Sengupta, and technical coordinator, uh, Mr. Tridi Borali, for uh, organizing this uh, uh, web talk. And I also wish to welcome all the participants and all the viewers to this web talk. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor uh, Sharma, sir. May I now invite our esteemed uh, speaker, Dr. Shajal De, uh, to put on uh, and speak out his, uh, his views on the importance of learning a foreign languages, the challenges therein, and the opportunities available to students and to academicians uh, who go beyond the track and do something different. Uh, Professor De, may you please uh, put on your talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And at the outset, uh, as I already told, my sincere thanks to the organizers, uh, to the principal of um, Dhamdama College, uh, Dr. Sharma, uh, the IQSC head, uh, Dr. Shen Gupta, and the other, other people who are helping in the technical uh, sessions, and of course the listeners. Uh, I would like to share my screen, so I am uh, going to Okay, uh, is it visible now? Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's visible, no? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, now the thing is that uh, as a foreign language teacher, uh, whenever I go and meet people for the first time, uh, they will definitely ask one question. Oh, you want a you want a teacher of Russian language? So, what are the prospects of learning Russian? So, everybody wants to know what are the prospects. I understand the situation that in today's world, today's India, prospects that means jobs are a very very important thing. Uh, one has to uh, look after jobs, uh, especially we have so many educated. Uh, uh, unemployed people in this country. And at the same time, I have noticed that while students are thronging uh, some subjects like Bengali, English, Hindi, Assamese, and other uh, common and popular subjects, uh, not many students are adopting for foreign languages. Although there are six vacant in many uh, big universities. Uh, in certain subjects. Even, even in our year two Shillong, uh, we often find that the seats are not filled up. And uh, the charges, as you know, in a central university like ours is ridiculously less. It is a thousand rupees per semester only. Whereas you go to any uh, institute outside, private institutes, you know how much the charge. It's minimum 30 to 50 thousand rupees uh, for a uh, even a COP course. So I was wondering the, what is happening. So from then onwards, I tried to find out why people are not interested and whether I should make them interested by uh, talking about certain points. Whatever I will deliver today is not deeply pedantic or anything. I'll just highlight certain points certain aspects, certain opportunities that, uh, that the foreign language students, I mean, the students who will learn foreign language can explore. 
And I, I specifically want to, uh, I mean, make the teaching faculty know that what are the prospects and opportunities in foreign languages so that they can guide the students because they are the key persons. The students are often very innocent. Or they don't know uh, what is where. The teachers should guide them that uh, whether they can go to for foreign languages or, or not and what are the opportunities. So let me start. Before coming to uh, the, the question, why should we teach or learn foreign languages? I'd like to say that right now I am speaking from Shantinigatan, my hometown. You know what Shantinigatan is. This is the abode of peace, literally, but actually uh, um, the dream project of Rabindranath Chagor, his Vishya Bharati, where the world comes into one nest, Vishwavarati was founded. And from very early times, Vishwavarati has, I mean, uh, encouraged teaching and learning of many languages, including foreign languages. The famous writer, Sayyid Mustafa Ali, who studied in Shantiniketan and later on taught foreign languages in Kabul and Baroda and other places, he learned most of his languages here in Shantiniketan. Even today, in total, 13 languages are taught. Among them, important Asian languages and European languages are there. So with this tradition as background, I can say that there is a tradition going on. We have to look into it, how we can I mean, and be, be, uh, uh, take benefit of that tradition or maintain that tradition. I hope I am audible enough to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, why should, why should we teach or learn foreign languages? As I told, I am often asked uh, by people that uh, what are the prospects of learning a foreign language? That means simply that most of the people we meet even in academia, are not aware of the exact prospects of learning a foreign language. Now, my question is, are prospects the only reason why we study or teach foreign languages? Prospect means jobs, we know, or how you earn, we know. But are that the only thing for which we should go for foreign languages? Or are there some other aspects to it also? Let us first define what is a foreign language. The word foreign means something which is not your own, something which is external, something which comes from outside. So, but the concept of foreign language you see differs from India, I mean, country to country. In India, you cannot call Hindi or even Marathi or even Tamil a foreign language. Although Tamil belongs to the uh, Dravidian uh, family, and we both Assamese and Bengali are from Indo-European family. But you cannot call Tamil a uh, foreign language. That is the Indian language, although the distance is too much. I mean, I'm not talking about physical distance. The linguistic distance is too much. But in Europe, English will call French a foreign language, French people will call German a foreign language. German people will call Spanish a foreign language. So the concept of foreign language actually varies from place to place. Even then, we have to, we have to understand that what we are actually aiming at. Let me start by asking this. What exactly is English in India? Is it a foreign language or an Indian one? When we, were, when we were children, when we were studying in schools, we knew that English is a foreign language, but very important language. We must learn it because it opens up the window into the world. But uh, some 20, 30 years back, we suddenly found that uh, English has been accepted as an Indian language. Even Saitya Academy started awarding 
uh, the, the, the writers uh, who are writing in Indian English. So there is a change in the attitude towards English. So you, you cannot call really English a foreign language. But of course, there is a, there is a debate going on it. Uh, some people will call it that English is the language of the upwardly mobile class. It is not really an so-called Indian language. But sociolinguistically, yes, it is a part of uh, a social group uh, of India. Now, let us go back. As we are discussing the importance of foreign language, let us go back to 1966, when the Education Commission in its report laid down the language policy, which the NEP, National Policy on Education, has also accepted at that time. The report has had clearly suggested that the place of English must be that of a library language, and the knowledge of one foreign language should be a requirement for a doctorate degree, and in certain subjects, even for a master's degree. But how far Indian universities could implement this strategy, we know. Apart from a few IITs and a few big universities, most of the universities could not do it. There may be some reasons. Maybe at that time, uh, the experts, but, but that many experts were not there, or some technical possibilities, infrastructural uh, problems were there. But uh, we know very well that uh, the Indian universities actually could not follow this recommendation fully. Although it was suggested by the NEP, we couldn't do it. Now, the second point is, often it is told that we must match the Lakshya Vishyamanam. Our aim should be to attain the Vishyaman, world standard, global standard in education. Now, if we are going to aim for global standards in higher education and research, my humble question is, can we do without foreign languages? Is it possible today to achieve global standards in education without proper foreign language education? Now, some of our students, many people, uh, they think that everything is available in English only. The other day, uh, some girls were sitting on the lawn, I mean, before this uh, lockdown happened, in the lawn, and I, I saw only five, six people in the library of our campus. I asked the girls, what are you doing? So they are studying. I said, studying uh, in the garden? Uh, you're not in the library? They said, sir, we don't require library. Everything is here. Means everything is in the net, everything is in English, and they are very happy uh, doing their work. So my other question is, is there nothing outside the realm of Google or any other internet search engine? Is everything in there? I think no. There are a lot of things we are missing out. Just imagine that Gayatri Chakravarti's Vivek was not born yet. And she did not translate the celebrated, I mean, there is a celebrated of grammatology from French. Or for that matter, for Dinan, the Sasur's, Sasur has not been translated. Or similarly think about the void that would have prevailed if Panini, Bakhtin, or Dostoevsky were never translated from so-called foreign languages. What would have been the condition of our, I mean, academia? particularly humanities and social, social sciences, just think about it. We are discussing these people today because all of them had been translated into English by some people who studied foreign language very well, exceptionally well. So there is a huge task at hand. And look at the time gap. When did Bakhtin write his magnum opus, his important books? And when, the, when was it, uh, English? 
there's, there's a gap of some decades. And until and unless you translate this English, unfortunately, you are not talk. So there is a big problem, there's a big time gap. And uh, I mean, uh, by the time Bakhtin was not being talked at all in Russia, the Anglo-American academia took it up because of translation, and then they started talking. It. And uh, unfortunately, we are very much uh, on Anglo-American academia. Whatever they say, more or less we follow. So my next point is, there are authors who are waiting to be explored, studied, and researched, something which would require knowledge of foreign languages. Many, many authors they are still not being translated, still not being uh, explored, and somebody has to reach them, translate them, make them accessible by people. Now, another problem is that if you see the rush to foreign language departments, there is there's always uh, go for big languages like Russian, French, German, Spanish, big European languages, or Arabic, Japanese, Mandarin, Korean, big Asian languages, and very few people will go for other smaller languages. Do we think that the big languages only store valuable information? Is there no uh, valuable information there available in other languages? We have to think about it, we have to think twice. I think the treasures can be found everywhere. It can be a big language, a small language, a written one, or even an oral form. And these uh, works are awaiting the eager attention of a researcher or a translator. And all these will require uh, knowledge in foreign languages. Now, there was a debate going on. Some people said that it's going on for some time now, that we don't require smaller languages, smaller insignificant languages, we don't require. The big languages, English, German, French, all these things are enough. We have enough uh, knowledge in it. But the linguists will, will, will not agree with you. They will say, encrypted in each and every language, history, arts, science, technology, linguistics, medicine, and other indigenous knowledge that has been accumulated over several centuries or even by the particular community. If you just ignore like that. My next point is, in one of the translation uh, workshops in Kolkata, a lady was a uh, lady from comparative literature department of some university was comparing two translations of a foreign text. I politely asked her, ma'am, do you know original language? She said, no, I don't know. Then I asked them, what do you compare? I mean, how do you compare? You are comparing two translations of a text, the language of which you do not know. You are just comparing the translations. So we understand that in comparative literature, the translated text is considered as a text, and we are comparing these two things. But there is a problem. I can give you a classic example. Uh, Russian writer Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace is known to all. Everyone knows that. In Russian, it is Vaina i Mir. Vaina means war, and Mir supposed to mean peace. But the problem is that at that time, Mir had two spellings. One is R soft, one is R hard. After the Deformation of the spelling and other things in Russian language, both the spellings became equal. Both became M-I-R, no subside. 
Now, the translator took it as peace, world, uh, world and peace. But just tell me, Mir has two meanings, peace and the world. Now tell me, if you have read that novel, where is peace in there? There is no peace. It's the total war time. Things are happening in the war time with, with 500, more than 500 characters. So, and Tolstoy is not such a writer. If you see the names of his novels, that he will name his novel with that kind of contrast, black and white, war and peace. Are his, I mean, the titles of his novels like that? I don't think so. So it most probably was war and the world. He wanted to show the world at the time of war, which, which has been translated by the translator as war and peace. So that is the problem, that is the trap you fall in if you rely too much on the translation and don't, I mean, refer to a foreign language expert. So my suggestion is to the departments of comparative literature and translation studies, that these departments will do full justice to their potential if they are closely connected with foreign language departments and foreign language specialists. They are doing very good job. I have nothing against them. But my humble suggestion is they will do even better if foreign language experts are connected in some way with their work. Excuse me. Okay, now as I told that, uh, I will talk about the um, opportunities that is there uh, for those who will study foreign languages. Definitely in number, the opportunities will be less than uh, the number English will offer. But still there are huge opportunities. And when I see that certain universities, certain departments are not at all filled with students, Whereas people are rushing for certain particular languages, I feel uh, sorry because all these languages give you some opportunities, some scopes, and the governments of the respective uh, countries, they also offer attractive scholarships for those who are doing well. Now let us see uh, what are the probable job domains uh, that the students can find. Number one, interpreters for international tourists or international events, maybe big political events where simultaneous transition is masked, if, even for the beauty contest and all. If you remember long back, this non-aligned meet, the first non-aligned meet we have done in India, we, we did not have any, any, I mean, our own uh, interpreters. Interpretation is even difficult than translation because you have to do simultaneously, immediately. You don't have time to think. Immediately you have to translate. So at that point of time, India did not have uh, enough uh, simultaneous interpreters. So we had to spend a lot of money and we had to hire experts from other countries. But the situation has changed. After that, the big universities and the uh, Institutes of India has taken up this thing. And right now we have quite, uh, quite capable uh, translators and uh, interpreters who are not only working in India, but also abroad. Translators or experts are also required for government and non-government organizations. National Book Trust, Saitya Academy, NTM, etc. Of course, they do a lot of, they do mainly from Indian languages to Indian languages, but they also do from English and other, I mean, uh, other foreign languages into Indian languages. And just let me tell you the, 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 the kind of money NTM gives, because I just attended a workshop 
and they conduct it. And the person from NTM told that if if somebody, some translator, is uh, has translated one book from NTM, I mean, uh, from the list of NTM, uh, that has one lakh words, maybe full, full book, one lakh words, now NTM will give him <clears throat> or her one lakh rupees because one word is one rupee and that's not bad. It's a good amount of money. Important government agencies like NDA, National Defense Academy, DRDO, the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRAW, Research and Analysis Wing, etc., where knowledge of foreign language is required. Now, let me tell you one thing. You don't require very high degrees <clears throat> to get uh, some of these jobs. Like, I had a colleague from, I'll not say from which state, uh, while I was doing my master's. And his spoken in Russian was fantastic. And uh, he could not finish his master's. In the second year, he went for an interview in RAW and then he disappeared. Now he can phone me, he phones me and he uh, tries to contact me and I cannot contact him because he's not traceable for, for uh, you know why, the reasons are there. So that is the kind of thing, just because of his very good uh, spoken, he has been uh, absorbed by raw. So the opportunities are there, which uh, I think many people do not know. Now Kendriya Vidyalayas and other schools, particularly in Delhi and other cities where foreign languages are taught. So the foreign language experts can get their jobs there. And of course, there are state universities, central universities, private universities or institutes in India or even in abroad where foreign languages are taught and foreign language experts are, I mean, accepted, I mean, recruited. But of course, if you want to be a professor in a central university, uh, just finishing a two year diploma will not do. You have to do your master's and net or PhD. So, so all these jobs uh, will vary. I mean, I mean, you, you, it will be as far your capability, you will get the job. And then BPO, business process outsourcing, and IT, ICT companies, you know, information technology, information and communication technology companies. I can give you another example. <clears throat> One boy, he was from Presidency College. He, I'm sorry. He was studying Bengali as honors in a very big college in Calcutta, Kolkata. He could not do well. He came to Hyderabad when I was doing my master's. He just finished two years diploma, one year certificate and one year diploma. Then he got into a BPO or IT company, this kind of a company. Now his monthly salary is not less than 1.5 lakhs per month. He started with 25,000, of course, some 15 years back, 15, 20 years back. Right now, not less than 1.5 lakhs uh, per month. And he has just a diploma in Spanish. So that kind of opportunities are there. Now, big business houses who has their marketing or other activities in foreign countries. Uh, one of my teacher's husband, he also uh, knows Russian very well. The, both of them did Russian masters in Russia. Uh, the lady became our teacher in, in uh, CIEFL, now we flew. And the man, he went to Kazakhstan as the country head of Randax. So he looks after, he looked after the entire marketing operation of Randax in Kazakhstan. Because Kazakhstan was part of USSR earlier, even though it is no more a part of that, but Russian is the language of communication uh, for them. So is in all the CIS countries. 
there are some foreign banks and other companies and organizations that require bilingual employees. If it is in Guwahati, they will ask for Assamese, knowledge in Assamese, and also that language apart from English. If it is in Kolkata, they will ask for Bengali, English, and that language from where uh, this bank is coming. So opportunities are there also. And very important for academicians, foreign languages can be an additional qualification for academic and research jobs. I, I have at least two, three examples where I have seen that all other things being the same, the person who has a diploma or a certificate in a foreign language has been given the job by the university, whereas the other person has not been not. Because foreign language degree or certificate gives you an extra edge to your uh, CV. And you can also uh, do better in your research jobs. Now, these are the, uh, these were the opportunities uh, why people should learn foreign language or why people learn foreign language. And then there are other reasons also uh, why people learn foreign language. Some people do it uh, to be able to do business in that country or with that country. And for that, they need to know foreign language or their employees need to know foreign languages. To be able to maintain political link with that country, it was especially true for political workers. I personally knew some friends uh, who studied uh, Chinese or Russian just to be in touch with the uh, political scenario, of course, communist political scenario in Russia and, and uh, China. So that is also a possibility why people learn foreign languages. To be able to communicate with friends and relatives who are foreigners. You have some friends, some relatives who are foreigners or living in there, so you, you learn a foreign language. To know the literature, culture, history, political situation of the country as part of area studies. In some universities, there is something called area studies. As part of that, apart from learning literature, culture, history, etc., you have to know the, that language also. To have access to research materials or political literature available in that language. I can assure you, I do not know about other languages. In Russian language, still there are huge amount of knowledge that has to be as yet to be translated, but has not yet come to us. Bakhtin is only one example, whom we have translated much later. So there are huge material lying many, many, in many foreign languages, which should be translated. For travel, tourism, recreation, and interaction with local people in a foreign country, when you are going there, it's better to know some I mean, a little bit, at least spoken Russian, spoken French, spoken Spanish to be able to talk with them, to feel at home and to explore better. And for enhancing social status. Uh, in our younger days, we have seen a boy will join a French class and then he will come to and tell her female friends, look, I have joined French, you know, I'm studying French. So <laughs> it enhances your social status also uh, in your peer group. For immigration to a foreign country with an aim to acquire citizenship, you require to know uh, that language in many countries if you want their citizenship. Without knowing their language, you cannot get that. For religious reasons, of course, Muslims learn Arabic, Hindus learn Sanskrit, Buddhists learn Pali because it is their holy language, their bhasha, pious language. So people will learn a foreign language for that also. And very rarely, people like me will learn a foreign language out of sheer linguistic interest. I'll tell you one just a story. Uh, when I was a youngster, uh, 
two books I like very much. That, that used to be near my pillow on the bed. One is Jibarananda Dasha's poem, poetry collection. And another is Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Idiot. I was in love with that book, the triangular love story, the tragical love story that Dostoevsky depicted in such a fantastic way. I was in love with the, with the language and the story of Dostoevsky, uh, The Idiot. Then I thought, let me see how can I learn it? Can I, can I read it in the original? So I started learning. Of course, it took a lot of time to, to read uh, Dostoevsky in original, but ultimately I became successful and I'm happy I did that. So each and every new language that you learn acquaints you with a new worldview, a new culture, a new perspective, and new horizons. They are foreign, it's not our own, but they are real. So to know them, to know their culture, the worldview, their perspective, and horizons, what better way can be there apart from learning a foreign language? And that perhaps will help us to understand and appreciate the so-called others better. Because we are othering everyone now. We are othering religiously. We are othering people uh, community-wise. We are othering people language-wise. And there is continuous strives going on in this country and the world. So foreign language can be a better way to be more tolerant and permissive and to be more collaborative and interactive rather than competitive. The present world needs that. And one of the vehicles is foreign language. There are some more benefits, cognitive benefits of studying a foreign language. Renate Latima, <clears throat> a professor in Auburn University in Alabama, USA, she has listed out 25 points the points that says that these, these benefits a, a child, a person gets when he or she studies foreign language. Let me see what are those points. One, I mean, I'll just uh, quote some of the points, not all 25. She says that analytical skills improve when students study a foreign language. Dealing with another culture enables people to gain a more profound understanding of their own culture because you are continuously comparing with your own culture when you are um, I mean, I mean, encountering a new culture. Creativity is increased with the study of foreign languages. Skills like problem solving, dealing with abstract concepts are increased when you study a foreign language. Foreign language, sorry, foreign language study enhances listening skills and memory. The study of a foreign language improves the knowledge of one's own language or that of the intermediary language because you are all the time comparing these two, these two phenomena. Foreign language study offers a sense of the past culturally and linguistically. And lastly, foreign languages open the door to many, many things. You learn a foreign language, you enter the world of art, music, dance, fashion, cuisine, film, philosophy, science, etc., etc. whatever is available there. Excuse me. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Okay. Who? Me? Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's okay. 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 Excuse me. Uh, Ma'am, I'm doing a webinar. Can I talk to you?
Uh, Sir, everything is fine. You can carry on. Okay. Okay. Um, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Fine. So, as I was telling, for this open door, so many things. You can do so many things with these things. Even you could do, uh, could do very well with your, with your so-called academics uh, as such, but you can do very well with this. What happened? Uh, my video. Sir, there is a network problem at your end. So for temporarily, I have uh, okay. uh, switched okay. off your video. I will switch on it again, okay. sir. Oh, no, no, you can no, yours, no. Yes, sir. You can yourself also switch it on. Yeah, no problem. It's okay. It's okay Thank for the time being. Thank you, sir. Okay. So foreign language study is simply part of a very basic liberal education. To educate is to lead out to lead out of confinement and narrowness and darkness, which is also the basic uh, concept of education. Now the question is, do we seriously want our education become a wholesome and holistic system? If yes, then I think we cannot ignore uh, foreign language studies. I want to quote here, the what the national education policy uh, has said in 1986 the said education has continued to evolve diversify and extend its reach and coverage since the dawn of human history every country develops its system of education to express and promote its unique sociocultural identity and also to meet the challenges of the times there are moments in history when a new direction has to be given to the age old process. That moment is today. And if it is today, I mean, it is already 86. Even if today we, we, we think we can do it, we should take help of foreign languages as well. We have already made significant process progress, as I told you, as compared to the 1960s as far as foreign language is concerned. In the 60s, we didn't have enough experts, we didn't have enough translators, we didn't have enough interpreters, but now we have. Now we can really man all the universities uh, with the expert, uh, expert foreign experts that we have produced. But uh, don't you think that much more ground remains to be covered? That was my last. So, Namaskar to everyone and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Dave, for your illuminating lecture, uh, where you have beautifully explained uh, the benefits of learning a foreign language. And apart from the obvious job prospects uh, of learning a foreign language, uh, uh, the kind of jobs that we can get because of learning a foreign language. Uh, we understand that foreign language also open out a lot in terms of liberal education, fine arts, music, drama, etc. There's obviously a catch, of course, the catch of othering, uh, which is really, which could be a productive bonus also in this. World. And it is very important that we learn to evolve ourselves uh, in terms of our intellectual capabilities, uh, in terms of our social coherence, in terms of uh, you know building up a, a vibrant society where we can share ideas and move ahead for the future. I thank you for your uh, for your uh, for your uh, illuminating lecture. May I now invite our principal, Dr. Shuranjan Sharma. Uh, to uh, uh, put his comments, uh, if you'd like to. Sir, uh, Thank you, Dr. Sengupta. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank uh, Dr. Sajalde uh, for his illuminating lecture on foreign language learning perspective and opportunities. In his lecture, uh, he opined that it is not possible to achieve global standard without studying foreign language. 
yeah, in present day world. Uh, because all important books and ideas of foreign languages were translated uh, um, uh, through English language. However, English it has been accepted uh, and, um, uh, as an Indian, almost Indian language uh, in India. Uh, however, uh, he also mentioned that treasures can be found everywhere, uh, big language or small language, etc. Uh, some probable job domains uh, like inter in interpreters uh, for uh, international tourists, uh, translators or experts for government and non-government organizations like uh, like uh, MBT, Saito Academy, NTM, etc. And similarly, so important government agencies like NDA, DRDA, DRDO, RAW, etc. where language of foreign, lang foreign language is, is required. Uh, Dr. Day also mentioned that in case of Kendra Vidalas and other schools, uh, the foreign languages are taught. And in case of foreign banks and other companies and organizations uh, uh, that require bilingual lingual em employees. Therefore, he mentioned the probable job domains uh, from learning, uh, through learning foreign languages. And actually, the, they mentioned why we learn, we should learn foreign language. Uh, he mentioned that as an additional qualification for academic and research job, jobs, foreign languages should be learned. To establish political link, uh, foreign languages is needed. To have access to research materials and political literature available in that language. Uh, also for travel, for tourism, recreation, and interpretation with local people uh, in a foreign country, foreign language is needed. Similarly, the, for religious reasons, like for example, he mentioned that the Muslims uh, to learn Arabic, Hindus learn Sanskrit, and the Bud Buddhists like Pali for, for, as foreign language. And very rarely, out of sheer linguistic interest, people learn foreign languages. So uh, foreign languages helps perhaps people to understand and appreciate others better. Uh, foreign language helps to be more tolerant and per permissive. And, to be more collaborative. Uh, similarly, Dr. Day mentioned that for analytical skills, uh, uh, foreign language helps to improve analytical skills where, uh, foreign, uh, where the study of foreign language also increases creativity among the people. Similarly, the, the, the knowledge of foreign language enhances the listening um, uh, power also. Uh, foreign language opened the door to art, music, dance, fashion, uh, film, philosophy, science, etc., etc. So that's, uh, then, uh, in this way, Dr. Day gave a, a brilliant uh, presentation to uh, among the participants of this web talk. So I uh, thank Dr. Day for his uh, informative lectures. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Falma, sir, for your uh, remarks. Uh, I'd like uh, I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Day uh, for his lecture. Professor Day has uh, beautifully explained so many important aspects of learning a foreign language, the benefits therein, uh, the the kind of uh, uh, opening up that we can actually go forward to and look forward to. I'd like. I'll take this opportunity to thank uh, our uh, principal, Dr. Shuranjan Sharma, sir, for helping us all the way out in organizing this seminar. Sir has been present throughout many of these sessions, and he has been really a pillar of strength for us. I'd like this opportunity to take this opportunity to thank Professor Mohanto, who is also among one of the panelists here, and especially the technical coordinator, Tudi Bharali, for helping us to hold this lecture. I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues from the college uh, who has also encouraged us to uh, organize this seminar and uh, uh, the uh, participants who have joined us through Zoom and YouTube and Facebook Live uh, and are watching this webinar live through various platforms. I take this opportunity to thank uh, the participants uh, who are watching from across the country. Uh, this has been really a wonderful session. 
I thank you, uh, Professor Day, and I thank uh, Suranjan Sharma sir, and especially uh, our uh, technical coordinator, Sridhar Bharali. Thank you. Uh, is that all, or will there be some questions? Ah uh, yes. Sir, we can... uh... Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, sir, actually, there were some questions uh, okay. which were received okay. by us. So I would like to put a questions from of, uh, from Sanshuma Goyeri. Uh, mm -hmm. He was asking, respected sir, mm -hmm. how far do you suppose that languages will play an important role in today's globalized world? Do you think knowledge of one's country language provide a better opportunity in selection of jobs? I think you have addressed this one, no, sir? Yeah, I have already told, I think. Yes, this one you have addressed. Already, already so, addressed. Uh, there is a question from our uh, panelist only, Rajiv Mohanta. He asks, is there any uh, established proven relationship between economic success of a community and popularity of their language as a foreign language? Which across communities? Uh, I don't have the statistics as such. Okay, I, I, I would like to listen to the question again, please. The question again, please. Is there any established mm -hmm. proven relationship between the economic success of a community mm -hmm. and popularity of their language as a foreign language across communities? Mm -hmm. I don't have any, have any such statistics as such. What I talked about is in the Indian context, uh, in what way we have lot we have lot of people who are studying ordinary languages. I mean, not ordinary popular subjects, but 80% uh, of them are not getting any job. You agree with me? 70% to 80% are not getting any job. Those who are doing very well, they are doing it. So there is a chance of getting not only jobs. But earning some other way through the foreign language door. Foreign language is another door. So that is only the uh, opportunities of earning. But apart from the opportunities of earning, I have also uh, shown some other benefits of uh, learning foreign languages, I think. And as such, there is no established statistics that I have seen. So I cannot talk on that. Sir, there was another question from Prasna Paramita Mohanty. Uh, mm -hmm. So she was asking, can you say that what are the institutes there in Bangalore? Uh, I think are related to foreign languages learning, I think, institute in Bangalore. But, but that's, she can just click Google and, and see. That is not a difficult task. She can just Google it. All the universities, I mean, they will show. Okay. Thank you, sir. I think these are the only questions. There are no more questions left. Okay. And I would like to uh, call upon uh, our uh, IQSC coordinator, sir, to formally end the session. Thank you, uh, uh, I uh, have, uh, th there might be a few questions also. This, uh, this, the kind of language that we can learn as a Z category student or something like that, Pradeep, there was some question like that. No, sir, I think uh, the question is very oh, no, I think I think I have seen one question that yeah. says that uh, in which language you can earn more. Ah, yes, sir. There's a, <laughs> there's a, actually, I skipped this question, sir. Uh, this, yeah. this is from Mr. N. Subramanian. Which foreign language yeah. can help the students to okay. learn and earn more? I would like to answer this one. See, <laughs> the thing is that uh, these things varies. Earlier, Russian government, I mean, the uh, Arstubile, even since the government, used to pay for everything. Our teachers in JNU and Hyderabad, all of them went to Russia, studied there, took their degree, bought uh, books and came back, everything with their money. But nowadays, the number of scholarships have come down, but still there are scholarships. And similarly, all the I mean, other uh, countries are giving uh, some kind of scholarship for kind of jobs. And uh, Spanish is spoken by so many countries right now that some of these countries are rich, some are poor. So there are a number of scholarships and other opportunities in these countries also. But comparative study I cannot do. Only thing I can say that Spanish is spoken in a lot of uh, countries, particularly in Latin America. Lots of countries speak Spanish except in Brazil, I think. 
Thank you, sir, uh, for answering the questions. Uh, here in between, I'd like to mention one thing that uh, the feedback form have already been submitted in the chat box, and uh, uh, you can fill up it. Uh, we enter within 30 minutes, uh, you shall return it back to us. Uh, then again, the feedback form link is available in the YouTube live video comment box, as well as description uh, window, and it will be active only for 30 minutes. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, Saurabh, sir, uh, you can proceed and formally end the session. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sudeep. Uh, actually, I had offered my vote of thanks uh, a bit early, probably, and this was something uh, I didn't actually see the questions coming, but there were a lot of questions, actually, and these were very important questions. And uh, I thank uh, Professor Day for having actually uh, brought these questions up. There are so many questions that we actually had to, you know, had, had to find some answers to. Uh, but but uh, anyway, uh, this has been a very wonderful lecture. Uh, thank you again, Professor Day, for coming here and talking to us and our principals and the uh, panel for organizing this lecture. I thank all the other people also, the uh, lecturers, the professors uh, who have joined us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. So I'm ending the session from here. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.